Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Keegan Duncan. I am an admission counselor with Texas State University. Uh, I've been on Texas State for about three and a half years, uh, and I am here to be your connection as students to the university. Uh, so like I said, with Texas State, uh, this is going to be my contact information on this slide that you can see right here. Uh, you'll see both an email address and a phone number for me. Uh, either one works. Again, if you have questions about the application or admission process after today, uh, I will be the one to contact and be happy to help you. A little bit about Texas State listed on this slide. Uh, as of fall 2019, we had about 38,000 students at Texas State which at that point meant it's the fourth largest public university in Texas. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty uh, dramatic growth. We were founded back in 1899, so well over 100 years. Uh, started as a fairly small teacher's college, but have now grown, like I said, to a, a pretty large place. Our main campus is in San Marcos, Texas. So when you look at a map, you can see there where we're located. We're about 30 miles south of Austin and about 50 miles north of San Antonio. So our students get a really cool balance between the large campus and all of the opportunities that come with that, along with being in kind of a smaller laid back feeling town, which is a, like I said, a really cool dynamic between those two. Uh, very, very much a college centered town. Even looking at this picture on your screen right now, just at the bottom of that hill that you can see is the downtown square. Uh, so very much connected to the city of San Marcos, uh, very much connected to that community that supports us. And again, being less than an hour away from both Austin and San Antonio, our students do have access to those major cities. So if you're looking for something, uh, you know, a big city experience on a weekend or a weeknight, concerts, sporting events, different things like that, they're right there pretty close to you and you can come back to your small hometown at the end of the night. So it's a great place to uh, attend college. A little bit about our students is gonna be listed on this slide. Uh, nearly half of our student population are first generation students. Uh, so students who neither of their parents or guardians, whoever uh, helped raise them, hold a bachelor's degree. Uh, so I actually fall into this category myself. Uh, neither of my parents hold a bachelor's degree, so I know what this uh, experience can look like firsthand uh, as a first-generation student. Texas State does a great job of helping these students, helping all of our freshmen really uh, throughout their time at Texas State, but especially during that kind of transition from high school to a residential college setting. We'll talk a little bit more about that later though. Uh, we're actually also a minority majority campus with 54% of our students identifying as coming from an ethnic minority background. We also have students from all 50 states and 74 countries from around the world. Uh, so odds are our students are gonna sit next to somebody or live down the hall from somebody who's had a completely different upbringing, completely different experience uh, throughout high school and throughout their life than they have. So again, a really, really cool place to learn from different People learn from different experiences and backgrounds. Uh, our students have a, a really neat opportunity to learn, not only in the classroom, but from their peers as well. We have eight different areas of study. Uh, we've got them broken up. Uh, we've got all of them kind of listed here. We have close to 100 majors, though, that fall into those eight areas of study. Uh, agriculture and food science there at the top uh, does include a pre-vet track, so for students who are looking to go into Veterinary science, that's definitely an option there. Uh, nutrition and food science falls into that category as well. Um, education opportunities that we'll talk about, but you can definitely be a health teacher through that food sciences program as well. Uh, so some pretty cool ones in that section. Business and administration, that next one down, we have six different majors in the business field. Uh, accounting, finance, economics, if you like working with numbers, marketing or management, if you wanna work a little bit more with people, or even computer information systems, which is going to be a, a computer focused business degree, making computers work for you in the business world. Communication is the next section down, uh, includes things like mass journalism, communication. Uh, one of the really cool ones for our students is electronic media. Uh, so it's kind of a radio and TV track. Uh, students get to work not only in front of a camera, but behind the camera uh, in TV style news coverage called Bobcat Update that goes out from our campus. We also have a completely student run uh, radio station on campus. So if students are wanting to go into the radio world, uh, they can have that experience while they're still in college. The music selections, the on-air personalities, the ones who generate the, the ads for uh, that radio station, all run by students. So real world hands-on opportunities. Education, as I said, we started as a teacher's college and we actually graduate the most certified teachers in the state of Texas. 
fourth most in the entire country. So we're super proud of, uh, of our teachers, our students that are coming out to be teachers uh, in that program. Health professions and human services, uh, we're gonna have some really cool specific health fields inside of that. Uh, respiratory care, radiation therapy, communication disorders, uh, and then probably the one that, that gets the most coverage is going to be our nursing program. Uh, our nursing program over the last four years has a 100% passing rate on that nursing licensure exam. So it's a very, very successful program for our students, um, regardless of what uh, type of nursing they're wanting to go into. Uh, getting that, that RN certification, that bachelor's degree is a great first step, and we are very successful at preparing students to go into that field. Humanities and social sciences will be that next section down. Uh, it includes anything uh, like English, history, geography, uh, international studies, and even our largest program on campus, which is going to be psychology. Uh, also have phenomenal opportunities in both social work and sociology as well. Uh, so lots of stuff going on in that humanities and social sciences area. Uh, the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math is the next one that you'll see listed there. Uh, of course, the typical biology, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, math, uh, all the ones that you would expect in that section. Uh, we do also have a pre-med track, a pre-health advising office uh, to help students regardless of what graduate level health field they're wanting to go into. Uh, so pre-med, pre-dental, uh, physical therapy, athletic training, occupational therapy, chiropractic, uh, they can help get you on the right course, uh, setting you up for that graduate level work. Then finally, that visual and performing arts area. Uh, phenomenal programs in art, dance, uh, theater, musical theater, as well as music. So if you're wanting to teach any of those fields, uh, if you're wanting to perform in any of those fields, uh, if you're wanting to create art of some kind, we can definitely help you out in the visual and performing arts area. We do also have our Honors College. Uh, this is a competitive application-based program uh, open for any students who are, who are interested in applying for it. Um, they are looking for students who have performed well throughout their high school, um, but will review students who do apply for this program. Uh, the Honors College is great uh, because in those Honors College classes that you sign up for, they're capped at 20 students. So they're very small classes. They're going to be discussion heavy seminar style classes. Uh, so instead of just being lecture style to where the professor is providing you the information, in a seminar you're able to kind of discuss, to get ideas from others, to collaborate and work together. Again, learning from other people who are learning the material also. So a great opportunity there. That individualized curriculum is a, a really cool facet of our Honors College because it allows some students, or it allows our students to replace some of their core curriculum, so the classes that everybody has to take, it allows it to, them to replace it with some of our uh, Honors College specific classes. These Honors College classes are going to be a little bit more specialized, a little bit more specific. Uh, I've got some of the, the previous Honors College courses that we've uh, offered here. A uh, creative arts class that was titled African American Popular Music and its effect on society, pol politics, and culture. Uh, we also had an American history course that was American history through memoirs. So reading memoirs that wrote about people who lived through history. Uh, so instead of a general American history textbook, you're getting to read uh, about these firsthand experiences. And the one that I really wish I could have taken, uh, an American history course that was called Baseball and the American Experience. So again, looking at American history through the scope of baseball. Uh, so our students get some really cool opportunities uh, in that honors college setting. Uh, once students complete five honors college courses uh, and complete that honors thesis that you see listed there, they're able to graduate with honors and can even minor in honors if they take, I think it's seven honors college classes. Uh, honors college students are also the first ones on campus to register for classes. They get to do early registration, which is always nice and then have access to specialized computer labs an honors coffee forum, as well as living on campus in the Laurel Honors Hall. As I said, students uh, at Texas State go through a fantastic first year on campus. Uh, we do a lot to support those students uh, who are new to our campus. And one of, those, uh, one of those things that we do is called PACE. It stands for Personalized Academic and Career Exploration. Uh, PACE is all about helping students again through that freshman year. Uh, it helps them figure out what exactly they're wanting to do in the career world, uh, it helps you pair up with some peer mentors, so some upper class students on campus who have already gone through this, who have gone through some training uh, and can help you figure out kind of what your career path, but also your time on campus looks like. 
Um, and then, like I said, some one-on-one -on -one advising, some career planning, uh, access to professionals there on campus who will be able to help you out. Uh, another piece of that is the universe, university seminar class that you see listed at the bottom of this slide. Uh, it is listed as a college prep class. I say it's kind of a transition from a high school to a residential college setting. It'll teach you the basic study skills and time management, the stuff that you really need to know uh, to survive and thrive in college. Uh, but there's also some really fun stuff. Uh, there's stuff like a glass, bo glass bottom boat tour. Uh, so with the San Marcos River that flows right through the middle of our campus, uh, our students get to take the glass bottom boat tour and actually see uh, where the headwaters of that river are. Um, it's really cool. You get to look over the side or look into the middle of the boat uh, to where it really is a glass bottom and you can see all the way down to the river, down to the springs where the actual river starts. Um, Another piece of that university seminar class, I know a lot of the teachers will take their students through the library. Now our library is seven floors tall. It's like putting seven football fields stacked on top of each other. Uh, so going through there, knowing what each floor is, which ones are quiet floors, where the Starbucks is in the library, all of that stuff's important. Um, and so all of that kind of goes into that university seminar class. And the coolest part about it is that class is also capped at 20 students. So it's a small class where you'll know the other students in there, You'll know your teacher of that class and be able to, to visit with them and get to know them, but also really learn from them uh, to see how they can help you and what resources there are around campus uh, that you have access to. Uh, like I said, Texas State's a big place. There's always something going on around campus. Uh, we have close to 400 different student organizations uh, that our students can get plugged into. These can range anything from honors organizations or professional clubs, special interest groups, uh, stuff that, that'll look really good on a resume whenever you start putting that together near graduation. Uh, we have traditional Greek life there on campus. Uh, we have community service opportunities. And we also just have stuff that's fun. Uh, a lot of us like to, to mention the, the hide and seek club. Uh, there's a hide and seek club on campus where their sole mission is to, excuse me, sorry, uh, is to get together and play hide and seek. Uh, so our students have that opportunity to kind of get away from the stresses of work, of, uh, of homework, and really focus on uh, you know, having fun, cutting loose a little bit. Uh, Bobcat Build that you'll see there is the largest service project on campus. I've been told it was the second largest college-based uh, service project in the state of Texas. Uh, so our students, our campus community, faculty, staff, all get together uh, one Saturday in April and really give back to that community that I was talking about earlier that really supports Texas State. Dozens of intramural sports, uh, intramural leagues, esports, different tournaments that go on on campus, 36 different club sports. Uh, so if we don't offer something at the NCAA level, then we might have it as a club sport. Uh, so lots of different opportunities there to where students are still wanting to be active and play a sport. They can do that either through intramurals or one of our club sports or even uh, participate in one of our NCAA Division I athletic teams. Uh, since those are NCAA Division I, there's a whole recruiting process or walk-on tryout process. Uh, but if you're just a, a normal student on campus and want to go and support your fellow Bobcats, you can just carry your student ID with you and get into any of those home sporting events for completely free. Uh, they'll check that at the gate and then let you in. Um, and you can be there, like I said, to support your fellow Bobcats. But I was like to point out our squirrels lots of nature, lots of green space around campus, uh, but it's also a chance to kind of take a breath because we're about to dive into the numbers side of things. Uh, this will, will kind of go through the application process. Uh, listed here is going to be our admission standards, what we're looking for in students who are joining our Texas State community. Uh, so first we're going to look at a student's uh, transcript. Uh, we're going to hopefully find four English, math, science, and social studies courses uh, sorry, three social studies courses, two foreign language, and then one both of fine art and physical education. We'll also look on that uh, high school transcript for a student's class rank, and then that will determine what level of the SAT or the ACT scores that we need. Uh, and you can kind of see on that chart there, we've got it broken down. The better a student does in their graduating class, the lower the test scores are that we require. Uh, now for this year, any of the 2021 incoming semesters, uh, we know COVID has affected a lot of students' abilities uh, or comfortability to take an SAT or an ACT test. Uh, and so if students are in the top 75% of their graduating class, 
we will review you holistically even if you don't have the SAT or the ACT scores. Uh, you'll also see on the right side of this slide that students who don't meet the assured admission criteria that we have listed here can also go through that uh, holistic review process, again, if you're in the top 75% of your graduating class. Our admission steps, our application process is going to be listed here. Uh, first, we're going to ask students to apply on either Apply Texas or the Coalition for College application. Uh, you can find both of those really easily at that admissions.txday.edu forward slash web, uh, forward slash apply website. Uh, then we'll also ask for an optional but recommended application essay. Um, again, if you are going through that holistic review process, that essay can definitely come into play. So that's why we recommend it. Uh, but again, it is optional. We'll ask for the high school transcript that we just talked about and the $75 non-refundable application fee. There are fee waivers available to students who qualify. That's going to be based off of family income. Uh, so if you have a, an SAT or an ACT fee waiver, uh, qualify for a NACAC fee waiver, a TACAC fee waiver, um, or even are on free or reduced lunch, uh, you can work with your high school staff there um, and they'll let you know um, about sending us an application fee waiver. Also, if you've taken any dual credit classes, uh, any college level work, we will need those official transcripts once you finish those classes. And then if you would like to send us the SAT or the ACT scores, you can do that uh, there in step six. You'll see the priority dates listed down there at the bottom of this slide. Uh, since most of our incoming freshman students join us in the fall, uh, that's the one I want to point out. That priority date is March 1st. Uh, so that means that we'd like for you to have your application and all necessary pieces into us uh, before that date. Uh, we may still admit students on a space available basis. Uh, if you submit stuff after that point. So definitely try to get everything into us before that March 1st date. We'll also talk about deadlines and stuff with financial aid, uh, but this is the one as far as when we're looking at admission purposes. We do have some programs at Texas State that are going to be limited access programs or programs that have additional steps. Uh, so programs like in our McCoy College of Business, uh, students have to meet the assured admission standards that I talked about earlier in order to be directly admitted into McCoy. Uh, if you're not uh, eligible to be directly admitted into McCoy, you can still come into Texas State as a uh, exploratory professional major. And then after your first year, you've taken a few classes, as long as you meet the GPA requirement and the course requirement that they have, you can still be a full business major at Texas State starting that sophomore year. There are also some programs at Texas State, mostly in that performing and visual arts area that do require an audition. Uh, you'll also see programs on the right side of this slide uh, where students start out at Texas State as a pre-professional major. So this could be something like pre-mass communication or pre-nursing uh, to where students start out, spend some time at Texas State, working on that GPA, taking some specific classes, and then once they meet the requirements for that program or fill out an additional application process, uh, can be admitted into those programs as full majors. If you're curious about any of those programs or wanting to know what the requirements are, you can definitely check that website in green that you see listed on this slide. One of the questions that we always get during these presentations uh, is about living on campus. Uh, so students want to know, do I have to live on campus? What are the options to live on campus? And that's what this slide talks about. All of our freshmen are required to live on campus. Uh, there are a few exclusionary options, uh, but a vast, vast majority of our students do spend their first year on campus. Uh, we have 23 different residence halls. They're laid out in six different styles. Uh, so our students do have a say in what residence hall they want to be in, what style they would like to be in. Uh, if you have somebody in mind that you'd like to live with, uh, so you've got your best friend, you're both coming to Texas State, I'm super excited, but you can definitely uh, still live together if you'd like to do that. Uh, whenever you go through the housing process, whenever you uh, do the housing prepayment and then the housing contract, just make sure you try to do those at about the same time. That way you'll be put into the same housing group and can select each other as roommates. You'll also see a couple of the neat facets of living on campus. One of them is our living learning communities that you'll see listed there in the middle. So these are opportunities for students of similar major or similar interest uh, to live together during that first year. So you'll be able to be down the hall. Uh, for instance, if you were a, an education major, you would be able to live uh, with other future teachers, which is a, a really cool opportunity to have similar class schedules, uh, to be able to collaborate on career opportunities and, and aspirations. 
as well as having faculty advisors, uh, other academic resources there for you. So it's a really cool way uh, to take your education and go beyond just the classroom with it. Uh, all of our residence halls do have access to, of course, kitchen laundry facilities, Wi-Fi access, uh, and then hall government. Uh, so if you're wanting to get plugged in and make the Texas State community even better, you can do that through hall government. We also like to talk through what the actual cost will look like at Texas State. Uh, you'll see a, an estimated breakdown uh, of costs there on the left side of the screen. This is for this year's seniors, so it might wiggle around for any of you juniors or sophomores who might be uh, joining us or watching later. Uh, broken down here, we have the tuition and fee section, so that's going to be your classes. Uh, you'll see the books and supplies part down below, and then campus room and board. Uh, the room and board is a fancy way to say your residence hall room and then your meal plan that go along with it. And then any personal miscellaneous and travel costs. So this could be gas in a car if you brought your car to campus. This could be extra groceries that you might need or you have meals out or something like that. We kind of build in that personal miscellaneous and travel option there as well. We're looking at right around 26,600 for the entire year. Uh, so that's about 15 hours, maybe five classes in both the fall and spring semesters. You'll see financial aid there on the right side. This is going to be all need-based financial aid based on either the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the TASFA, which is the Texas Application for State Financial Aid. Uh, these both opened October 1st. Um, so if you're eligible for the FAFSA, definitely get that filled out as soon as possible. If you're not eligible for the FAFSA, the TASFA is also there and opened October 1st as well. Getting that into us as soon as possible uh, can definitely benefit you because it will let us know uh, what grants or work study opportunities that you might be available for, as well as some loan opportunities if that's going to be an option for you. You'll see that the priority deadline for that is January 15th. We like to start trying to send those uh, financial aid packages uh, pretty close to the, the first of the year, but after that January 15th date. Um, so definitely try to get all of that information into us as well as your application and admission steps to the university before that January 15th date. Another really cool part of Texas State is our scholarships. Uh, so this is free money here. Uh, the assured scholarships that you see listed on the left side of the screen uh, are going to be just based off of your academic work. Uh, so looking to see how you did during high school, but then the test scores, if you have them as well, uh, if not, they are reviewing students, again, holistically for those assured scholarships. Um, but they're, they're kind of updating what those requirements and what that holistic review process will look like right now. You'll also see the competitive scholarships on the right side of the screen. Uh, these are all online application-based scholarships. So you will apply for them and then like the name implies, you're competing against other students who might qualify for these scholarships. Uh, this is all done through the Bobcat online scholarship system. We like to call it BOSS. Uh, it's a intuitive system that will actually narrow down scholarships that you might be eligible for. So if there's a scholarship that's only available for students from Minnesota, it's not going to flag for a student from Texas. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool to see how it narrows down scholarships. It'll flag the ones that might be a best fit for you so that you don't, uh, you know, you don't spend any extra time working on scholarships that might not be eligible for you. Uh, this is the soonest deadline that, that we'll have at Texas State. Uh, you'll see that that's a December 15th deadline, uh, and that one does shut down on that December 15th date. Uh, so students do have to be admitted and have any of those Bobcat Online Scholarship System applications submitted before that December 15th deadline in order to be eligible for those competitive scholarships. So the sooner that you can get all of that information into us that I talked about earlier, the application process and then the scholarship applications, the better off you'll be uh, at potentially receiving some of these scholarships. Uh, we also have information here about coming to visit us. Uh, we are open for in-person on-campus tours. Uh, right now, our student-led tours are full through the month of November. We're still trying to figure out what December looks like. Uh, so if you're curious about wanting to join us in December for a student-led tour, uh, you can keep an eye on that visit website that you see uh, kind of at the top middle of your screen. If you're interested in a uh, self-guided tour or even a car tour around our campus, you can still go to that admissions website, admissions.txa.edu forward slash visit. Check out that website, find out where the, the Welcome Center address is, 
once you check in at the Welcome Center, they'll get you set up. Uh, they'll keep record that you came, uh, but they'll also get you started on that self-guided or driving tour. Uh, the driving tour is brand new to our campus. Our students can, uh, prospective students can go around, I think there's five or six stops around campus where you'll get out of your car, you'll scan a QR code on your phone, and then it'll have a video telling you what's around you and where you are on campus. It's really cool, we're excited about it. Uh, we also have our Bobcat days. We're actually having a Bobcat week in November. Uh, these are gonna be live sessions and pre-recorded sessions from not only the admission office, but different departments throughout campus. So financial aid, academic departments, uh, education abroad usually has a session. There are lots of different opportunities, lots of extracurriculars uh, that, that have sessions during those Wildcat Days and Wildcat Week. Uh, this is a point where I kind of wrap up. Uh, so if there are any students who are here with us today uh, that do have any questions, I will be happy to answer those for you. Uh, this is kind of our general uh, address and phone number for the, the main admission office listed here. Uh, so if you're looking to submit uh, transcripts or anything like that, you can definitely submit them to that website. And then as we wrap up, I will put my personal contact information back up on the screen for just a minute. So if you wanted to contact me after today, you can definitely do that. Uh, other than that, thank you for being here today. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, and I will be happy to answer any questions that y'all have at this point.